Hey, my name's Mike. I'm a back-end engineer and I'm working full-time in the AI space. And today, really, what I wanted to go over is the whole stack of applications that are now being used to create AI automation projects or AI development projects, right? I know, especially when I started coming into the space, it's super hard to, like, understand what sort of software and should I use BotPress, should I use Flowwise, should I start custom coding? What sort of tools that you need to use to actually build out these projects. So today's video, I'm gonna go over the whole suite of tools all the way from complete no code, bot press, all the way down to the granular level of Langchain and then all the different databases and large language models that you could use and how you're gonna use them. And then like, what would you use each one for, right? So first off, I'm just gonna go over the two categories really. We're gonna jump into all the actual different solutions by themselves. So you've really got two sides of the, the coin here. You've basically got custom code and you've got no code. So let's just talk a little bit about what each one pertains and, and why, why it's good and why it's not good. So with custom code, you've basically got tools like Langchain and then the large language models and then you connect those to vector database and so forth. I'll go over those later. Basically, the use cases for these are everything. You can pretty much build everything with custom code. So bots, agent, custom workflows, data analytics tools, data formatting, automating like customer support tickets, and then also like connecting generative AI as well. So say you want to connect like mid journey and then you want to pump like a mid journey picture into the, the video AIs now that are getting pretty good. You can do that with custom code. So the pros are pretty much like, as I said before, you can build anything here, especially if you've got a good enough developer or you're a good enough developer yourself. It's pretty easy to, to get up to date on these tools. You can also charge like a higher ticket per charge. So instead of charging, you know, a few thousand dollars for each sort of implementation, you can, when you start building out these custom code applications, you can charge anywhere from 5,000 to 15,000 even per week of development. Now, the cons are, like, it can be super time intensive. It can be a huge time sink, and you might even need to hire a few more developers to actually work on these projects. One big thing that I always see is that these projects tend to always expand in scope. So if you think this project's going to take you one week and one developer, it's probably going to take you two weeks and one developer or one week and two developers. These projects always tend to expand and be, like, a little bit harder than they actually seem. And then quickly going over the, the node code tools. So, you know, just quickly, we got BotPress, VoiceFlow, Flowwise, Zapier, and we'll get onto those later. The use cases for these are like the just simple bots, AI integration, so getting Google Sheets to hook up to your emails. Use, you know, you want to use these tools like Go High Level for all your lead gen and setting up like email campaigns. You don't really want to be custom coding that because those solutions are already out there. And then workflow optimizations. The the pros for this is it's just super simple, right? So all like with BotPress, all your UI is taken care of, all your hosting is taken care of, all your backend services are taken care of. You don't need to write any custom code for that. It's less technical. Pretty much anyone can get onto BotPress and within a day you can start building pretty good bots. And what I like to use it for as well is quick prototyping. So when a client comes to me and I need to fulfill an order, I don't go away and just start custom coding the whole project. What I'll do is I'll make like a quick mock-up or when I'm reaching out to a client, I'll make, create a quick mock-up in BotPress or Flowwise just to show and demo the, the skill and like what, what the MVP could actually look like. The cons really is like the client can do this themselves. I mean, anybody can really go onto BotPress and get up to speed super quickly. Anyone can really create a Zapier you need to watch like a five minute YouTube video and then you can pretty much create anything on Zapier. So this is why you have to, unless you're really good at marketing, charge a much lower ticket per item. Because at the end of the day, what you're actually selling is not the product, you're just selling sort of like your knowledge, your ability to use BotPress way quicker than the, the customer can. And then another thing is it's limited to your like base application feature set. So Say you build out a feature, you know, you, you reach out to a client and they say, right, I want this, 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 and this. And you go into BotPress and you build all those out. Then when you actually want to start adding extra features, so say you want to now, you know, connect that to, you know, 11 Labs API, which does like voice and you want to ingrain that into like the front end, 
you're going to need to do some custom code for that. And bot press isn't that easy to do the custom code. I th like you can eventually do it. You know, you have to basically write all your UI yourself. You have to redo the, the UI. You can use bot press in the in, in the background, but that's basically going into the, the the custom coding environment. And it's probably better just to custom code the whole thing from the start. So if you know that the project is going to expand in scope, it's probably not a good idea to start using no code tools to, to build out these applications because eventually you will need to start going in custom code. And sometimes getting that custom code to work with these no code tools is way more hassle than it's actually worth. So let's actually go over some of the categories now. And these are these are basically the main categories. So you've got your like no code bot builders, and this is from like easiest to learn on, on the left, like the least amount of code to like the most amount of code that, that, that you sort of need. So no code bot builders. So this is bot press, voice flow. So this is basically you get like an, a pretty nice environment to start develop your bot. This is just an Airbnb bot that I've built. And you know, you can send messages, you can do AI tasks, you can do knowledge bases. Although the knowledge bases in BotPress and, and VoiceFlow, they, they actually don't work very well. There's, this, this is why a lot of people say you, you need to actually connect it to FlowWise or, or Stack AI. I'll get onto that a little bit later. And you can also do custom code as well. So for example here, this is just a simple Zapier webhook. So we're just taking taking a message and passing it to Zapier, which eventually is just being put into a Google Sheets. So you can you can in, in, integrate code here, and especially if you're a developer, you can do quite a bit with this. It's also got a nice, a nice AI generation, so if you're not a developer, you can sort of just tell it what you want, and it will try and build the code, although I've, like, this works 50% of the time, and sometimes you do, like, a lot of the time you need to actually go into the code and start changing the variables. And then VoiceFlow is basically the, the exact same thing. It's like BotPress. I actually think it's a a little bit more reliable, especially on the, the, the delivery side. I find with bot press, sometimes when you deploy these bots, they can be a bit buggy. Sometimes like they can just loop in a single step and I think their back end isn't just isn't as solid as, as voice flow. But th again, th they're pretty similar. You just need to have a play around with them. Next, we go on to sort of like these automations and integrations. So these are no code tools that basically act as like a hub. So if you can get to Zapier or you can get to make via some sort of API call, you can pretty much get to like thousands of different applications from there. Think of it as like the, the, the major train station in, in a big city where all the trains come in and then all the trains go out. They're like the hubs of like the AI automation internet. So Zapier, basically, you can you can do everything. I mean, here we're, we're just doing sort of webhooks. So we're just sending to a webhook, putting it into Google Sheets. You know, you can do type form to Google Sheets. You can do Gmail to Google Sheets. And it's not just two applications. You can, it's basically like a linear list. So you, you do this, 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 this. So you can send it through a ton of different applications. Same with make.com as well. It's basically, basically another Zapier competitor. Pretty much similar. I just use Zapier because it's what I'm most comfortable with. But I think I've heard a lot of good things about make.com as well. So... So really use these sort of automations and integrations to connect to the outside world. Instead of like writing the code for like your own API from BotPress to try and connect to Google Sheets, which is just pretty difficult because then you need to do a lot of authentication and stuff like that and understand how their API works. It's just very simple to get to Zapier and then like graphically put everything together. And, and I, I use it all the time and, and most developers will, will use that as well. So next, you've got these based tools called Flowwise and, and, and Langflow. You've also got Stack AI, which is the, the paid version. And basically what these tools allow you to do is have a lot more control over how you actually build out these applications. So I think actually all three are based on Langchain. I'll get to Langchain in a bit, which is the, the code, the code library. And these are all just graphical implementations of of that code library. So it's pretty good to, to quickly prototype and you don't have to spend a lot of time, you know, if you're a developer writing out a bunch of like boilerplate code. So this is just something to, this is a really quick flow wise, just to show you what it looks like. You basically have these, these, these elements and you just sort of connect them all together. You can basically demo it in a, in a chat pretty easily. It, they also have their own like hosting service as well. So you can, embed it into your site, or you can actually use it as an API. The, the one thing with Flowwise and Langflow is that 
these are open source, so they're free, which is really nice, but you actually do have to then host it. Okay, so a hosting solution that I would recommend using is just render. You just you can take the repo and just host it on render and this will host all of your flows and it costs like seven seven dollars a month. You can also host these on all the other hosting platforms as well. I'll get to that a little bit later. Now Stack AI is the more expensive version. It's the sort of the, the SaaS of, of this no code UI world. But as you can see, like it, it does start to get very expensive. And for like $200, you, you, you know, you only get three projects. It's, it's really not that great. Things can get like super expensive here. And I actually think just playing, playing around with stack AI that flow wise is just as, just as good. But again, I'd recommend just playing, playing with all three of these and seeing what, what sort of fit fits you, fits you well. So even if you're not a developer, you can start building out these, these more robust AI development tools and sort of for like flow wise if you have a look at all the different elements you've got all the you know the major a agents baby AGI auto GPT you've got all your chains LLMs you can connect to a bunch of different language models all your different vector stores you know Chroma Chroma Pycon, Py Pinecone Quadrant so these this is really good for building out these prototypes for for slightly more complex AI solutions and even if you are a developer, I would actually just use this to build out your prototype before you go away and start custom coding. So next we've got like these hosting services, like I mentioned before. So we got Render, and then we've got the sort of the, the, the big three. We've got you know Google, Google Cloud Compute, Azure, AWS, and there's a bunch of other ones as well that are kind of like Render, the smaller companies. Personally, I would just use Render for now. If you're like building out your APIs or whatever, just shove them on Render. It's a super simple setup to use. If you're going to use Azure or GCP, you need to have a little bit more knowledge on how those work, and, and those can sometimes take a little bit more setup and management, but you can do, again, a lot more stuff with them. You can have a lot more control. So next we got the vector databases. So I'll only cover two here with one paid and one open source. So Pinecone is the paid version which means it's like everything's hosted for you. It's super simple to connect. So they've got a free tier as well, which is pretty good. And they seem to have some of the most sort of like reliable code. One thing to note is vector databases are super new. They're basically created for AI. There's, you don't use them for anything else. So like even with Pinecone, you can get like a lot of errors if you're trying to connect your flow wise to Pinecone. It'll sometimes just error. And then you'll look on the internet and no one will know. So you've got to have a lot of play around. Sometimes you need to delete the indexes and, and reinstate them. But eventually those, these bugs will sort of get ironed out. And then the next one is Chroma, Chroma DB. So this is an open source vector database. Also pretty good, really good to use if you're just writing out some Langchain code and you want to just start testing stuff. You don't really want to, you don't really want to start sending stuff to Pinecone. You can run this locally on, on your machine. This does, again, take a little bit more technical know-how how to use. And if you want to use it for production, you need to set it up and host it somewhere. And next, I actually forgot to, to sort of include it in its list, but it's its own sort of category, which is Langchain. So what Langchain is, is a Python library that just connects everything for you and just builds out a ton of boilerplate code. So it builds out agents, chains, memories, allows you to connect to, you know, these vector database, Pinecone, Chroma, all these different language models super easily. So you don't have to write out a ton of code. So you don't have to write out all your API requests and, and stuff like that. And it just allows you to build out these AI solutions way quicker. If you are a developer, I would start getting used to using Langchain. There, there really isn't, there's a few different competitors out there, but none are really as good as Langchain. And again, there's a lot of tutorials online. It's not that difficult to learn. And this is if you're actually going to build any any project that has like a fair bit of scope, you need to basically use, use Langchain. So lastly, let's talk about the large language models. I've just listed sort of three, three of the main ones here. And Hugging Face actually isn't a large language model. It's a large language model hub. I'll get onto that a little bit later. So these are, you know, the, the where where all the magic happens. This is where you're actually connecting your application to right at the end. This is where you're getting all your, you know, sending your queries and getting them back. So 
everyone's familiar with OpenAI, you've got GPT 3.5 Turbo, GPT 4. You do still have to apply for the, the GPT 4 API key, although I know that they're rolling those out pretty quickly now to, to a lot of people. OpenAI also has the, the OpenAI Embeddings API, which is what you'll probably use like 100% of the time if you're using vector stores. And if you want to know a little bit more about vector stores, I did a video here in which I explained exactly like how they work in the back end. It's pretty good to, to, to get a foundational understanding, so I'd go check that out. And next, you've got like Hugging Face, which is this really cool sort of open source platform that also allows you to do hosting and training. And it's a, it's a really nice all-in-one platform that's being built out and sort of is the, the hub of all the open source models out there right now. So as you can see on the screen, like each one of these is an open source model that you can literally just go download and start playing around with. Or through Langchain, you can just connect or Flowwise you can connect to, to, to one of these these models you can start fine-tuning the model so you can actually like continue training it and train it on your own data there's so much stuff you can you can do here this is a little bit more complex so if you don't really have any development experience it might take a little bit of understanding of how you know what all these different models actually are and you can see like here we've got stability i stable beluga 2 which is a version of the Llama 2, so that people basically take Llama 2, they fine-tune it, and then give it their own name. This is like the, the best Llama, Llama 2 version actually out there, which was really recently released. And this is super good to use if you have clients that are really wary about their data. If they have sensitive data, you might not want to send that to a closed-source company like OpenAI because you just don't know what they're going to do with that data. So you can actually offer a service where you can basically download one of these models, fine tune it and host the model on your client's own hardware. So it basically just gives another layer of security and you can satisfy that client needs. And obviously if you're doing that, you can charge a much higher ticket price. And then lastly, we've got another one. So this is, this is Claude by Anthropic, fairly recently released. It's got some pretty good capabilities. You have to apply for the API key again, though they're slowly rolling it out. But the nice thing about Claude is that it has, I think it's like a 70 or 100,000 token context limit. So what that means is you can like give it 30 to 40,000 word prompts where when you're looking at chat GPT and like the, the, the API is there, it's like from 4,000 to 16,000 tokens, which are the, the, the maximum amount that you can send it. Whereas 70,000, you can pretty much just give it like a whole book and tell it to write another book similar to it. So this is definitely a large language model to keep an eye on. So hopefully that gave you a really good overview of the type of tech stack that you would use to actually build out uh, an application. So I'm just gonna go over like a really quick example of a problem and how I would actually build it out and what sort of, pro like, what sort of products I would actually use to eventually build it out. So say I'm tasked with building a bot for a website that also needs some like custom flows and just needs to capture user data and, and sort of ask certain questions and then like give it certain, pro certain products back. This is how I would start thinking about it. So this would be just a pretty simple stack. So I'd probably use BotPress. If you're sending like a bunch of messages to, to your client and like preset messages. You probably don't want you to use Flowwise because Flowwise on Langflow, they're just fully connected to fully connected to like the AI. So if you want to spend like specific messages at these sort of points, you want to use BotPress. But then I would also connect that to Flowwise for any of the knowledge base queries. So if I'm hooking up to their website or their backend database or a bunch of their documents, BotPress's knowledge base kind of just sucks. So I would create a flow and then via like API and the code in BotPress, I would connect to Flowwise. Flowwise, I'd probably just use Pinecone for simply just the, the, the quick hosting. And then from BotPress as well, we would connect to Zapier. So if I'm saving emails or phone numbers, anything like that will go Zapier. We'll throw that into a Google Sheets. We can also from Zapier then do like SMS emails to your to your client to say, hey, someone's looked at this really high ticket item. You, here's their number. You might want to call them back. So that would all be through Zapier. So this is just like a very simple overview of 
how you would use these, these different tools. And that's it for this video. If you would like to work with me, if you're a company that needs a solution being built out, please reach out to me in the email below. Or if you just want to take an hour of my time to discuss some code, to discuss some ideas, or just query my knowledge, I've also got a link below and you can go and book a meeting with me.